Hi ladies and gentlemen, Morin Uday from work here again. Uh, the topic that I'm going to be, discuss, be discussing in this video, as the header already suggests, is uh, the significance of the number 3 and uh, its incorrect uh, definition within the mainstream media and displayed by pop media. <clears throat> uh, long story short, I don't know if you've, some of you haven't noticed, I think this has also been issued by the Catholic Church or something, but in any case, um, in movies and so on, let's just say horror movies or movies about someone being possessed by a demon and all of that stupid stuff. Um, often when, for example, a demon scratches a person, then it's said that it's always, okay, those scratches are always threefold, okay, there are always three scratches, why not four or five or anything like that, or two or just one big scratch. Okay, um, that's an example. The point in case is that... Um, within pop media um, people live by or go by the stupid notion okay the idiotic notion that um, <coughs> that the number three is basically a way is the way that demons mock the holy trinity okay and i think allegedly christ was also born at 3 a.m or something like that that's when mo that's why most possessions take place at 3 a.m uh, and that's what the number three is, is uh, that's what the number three means when it comes to possession and so on. This is something that is, is um, uttered multiple times or, or is displayed multiple times within the mainstream media, media, pop culture and I think it also stems directly like I said at the beginning from the Catholic Church which is all nonsense, okay? I'm here to set the record straight for those of you that don't that also believes this stupid this this stupid notion or idea or ideology and for those of you that are that just weren't aware of it okay like I just said this is pure nonsense okay three the number three is not meant to mock the Holy Trinity it's not the way the demons mock the Holy Trinity okay um, as in, in most cases okay as is the case in most cases the thing is also that um, that that the mainstream media and pop culture and mainstream models in general, okay, mainstream people in general, know little to nothing about the occult. So they automatically make up a bunch of stupid stuff, which is reflected in pop media, okay, possessions and all kinds of other nonsense. It's the same as most of them calling practically any spirit a demon. So it doesn't matter, okay, whether that spirit does something, um, uh, whether that spirit does something negative or anything like that. Any real magician knows that it doesn't matter, okay, whether a spirit does something good or bad. You can't classify a spirit as a demon, okay, just because that spirit um, did something negatively, okay. But again, mainstream people will immediately jump to the idea of a demon. Oh, okay, it did something negative. So it must be a demon, okay? And if it does something well, it's a spirit guide. Automatically a spirit guide, nothing else. It's just so stupid, okay? That's why I have difficulties watching these movies. For me, these movies are, are, are retarded levels of entertainment. I just chuckle when watching movies like uh, The Exorcist and, so, and, and Veronica. That's a recent movie that came out last year or something. A Spanish horror movie about, based on a true story. Okay, again, another example is like the classic movie The Exorcist, okay, Pazuzu's name is mentioned. When Pazuzu isn't even a demon, Pazuzu is a pagan god, okay, Sumerian pagan god, or Babylonian, one of the two. Um, <coughs> so yeah, stuff like this can be annoying and slightly offensive to me as an occultist. But in any case, let's get down to the main topic, okay. The number three does not stand for that, like I just said a, a minute or two ago. The number three, okay, in possessions or whenever a spirit is tormenting a person, is causing a person pain and agony, and whenever a spirit is basically messing with someone, to put it that way, okay, and the number three comes into play. The number three is a reference to Bina, okay. We're talking about the Kabbalistic uh, sphere of Saturn. Okay, Saturn as a planet deals with death, destruction, limitation, and restriction. Okay, in a good way as well as in a bad way. Okay, 
Saturn is one of the darkest planets out there, okay? Saturn isn't known exactly for good things. Saturn is more uh, known for things that are necessary, okay? An example is being able to endure hardship for your own well-being, coming out stronger, being well-disciplined, you name it. All of these things are things that basically put you through negativity in order to come out stronger, okay? Simple example is discipline. In order to discipline yourself, okay, or disciplining yourself as a whole, means forcing yourself to do something, to adhere to a certain rhythm, okay? For example, if you need to go to work at 3 a.m. in the morning, you're basically forcing yourself to get up at 3 a.m. in the morning. And, yeah, that's a simple example, okay? That falls under Saturn, okay? As Saturn rules uh, Capricorn, which also stands for discipline and Aquarius. And <coughs> that is what I mean, a simple example. The most violent planets or planets that deal with destructive or dark aspects, things that people are generally afraid of, are number one, Mars, which stands for outright violence, uh, number two, Saturn, and number three, Pluto, okay? Uh, Saturn, like I said, deals with these kind of things positively. I just listed some of the positive things, self-discipline and hard work and all of that. From a negative perspective, Saturn deals with pain and suffering and death when it's unwanted, okay? So infernal spirits, demons, or spirits that are just um, not celestial and that are Saturnian in nature, will do things that people will dislike. For example, tricking people, just messing around with people, or outright tormenting people, which is the case in possessions. So whenever the number three comes into play, it either means A, that said spirit is Saturnian in nature, B, that said spirit is either acting on behalf of Saturn, or C, uh, I'm sorry, there is no C. Those are the only two things that come to mind. Okay, so yeah, it's one of the two. Okay, that spirit is either Saturnian in nature, or that spirit simply um, is acting on behalf of Saturn, regardless of whether that spirit is indeed Saturnian or not. Okay, but bottom line is that that's what the number three means in an occult context, okay? Nothing else. Um, again, any occultist knows this, and general grimoires and so on will point to this, okay? In the Great Turkey of Solomon, for example, with these pentacles, um, like the ones that I have tattooed on me, um, just check Saturnian pentacles. I have, there's not a single Saturnian pentacle that I work with, okay, with the exception of the first pentacle of Saturn. And I rarely work with Saturnian spirits at all, so I rarely get a chance to use it, okay. You'll see itself that the color associated with it is black, and, um, and that the description of all of these pentacles have to do with, deal with negative things. Not negative things, but let's just say things that are negative to the average, the average person. Things that are necessary in alignment with the universe as a whole, but things that the average person will grossly misconstrue as uh, negative. You name it, death, destruction, uh, evil spirits, you name it. Um, I'll hold on, I'll show you the first pinnacle of Saturn. This is the first pinnacle of Saturn. As you can see, it's completely black. I had to draw with, uh, with a pencil on it, okay? That's the only way that um, the symbols on it and Hebrew letters and all of that, all of the other elements that make up the pinnacle are clearly visible. They might not be visible on, on um, camera. I don't know if they are, but in any case, uh, now, you guys can, you, now you guys saw the pinnacle of Saturn. This is what all pinnacles basically look like, uh, Saturnian pinnacles, all black. That's what Saturn stands for, and that's what the number three stands for. That's why in most cases, in most hauntings, whenever you see someone or a location, okay, being possessed or being haunted, someone being, ha being possessed or haunted or a location being the same, in most cases, more often than not, they're either Saturnian or Plutonian entities, and sometimes Martian, especially if these spirits are aggressive. But again, in most cases, they're lower level, lower level spirits, okay? We're talking about really lower level spirits that, that just feed off of other people's pain and misery. But these aren't high-ranking high spirits, rarely, now. Um, these lower level spirits fall under these high-ranking spirits, obviously. 
Uh, and that's it. Now you guys know when the case. Bye.